Before we build any circuits on our breadboard, we have to understand how the breadboard functions. At the top here, where we have a red and a blue line, it's called the power bars. On this particular board, I have one at the top, in the middle, and on the bottom. Now, each one of these holes are connected horizontally, or to the one to the right and to the left. So that means that this hole is connected to this one, is connected to this one, all the way across. The effectively considered one point on the board. And the same thing is true with the holes by the blue line. This one's connected to this one, connected to this one, all the way across. And that's true for each one of these power bars. This one's are all connected across here. And these are all connected across here. However, they are not, they are not connected to each other. So you can have multiple voltages used on this board. And of course, the blue or the negative are all connected across as well. In between your power bars is where we actually put our components, and it's broken up into two sections. We have this upper section here, and we have a lower section. Both sections are separated by this channel. The channel makes it possible for us to put integrated circuits onto the board. Now these holes are connected vertically, which means that this hole right here is connected to this one, is connected to this one, connected here, and it's connected to here, but not to the ones on either side. So it allows us to have one connection point with five actual points. Same thing down here. We connect this one, is connected to this, to this, to this, and to this. Right? However, they are not connected across the channel. Let's go ahead and build a simple series resistor circuit. I'm going to start by putting a jumper into our positive power bar and bringing it down into the white section. Now my first resistor, I have to make sure that my one terminal is in the same column as my jumper wire. I'll go ahead and pop that in. And then I'll go ahead and put it in any other column over here. It doesn't matter. My second resistor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the channel. So I'm going to make sure that the one terminal is in the same column as the second terminal of the first resistor. And I'm going to bring it down over into the white section. My third resistor, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make sure its first terminal is in the same column as my second resistor. So go ahead and put that in there. Bring it over. And then the last thing I need to do is bring in my ground, which I'll use the bot middle, should say, power bar, making sure it's in the same column. And there is a simple three resistor series circuit. Now most of the problem with these circuits is people will not make sure that their terminals are in the same column. If they're off then obviously the circuit won't work. So all I would need to do is go ahead and bring in my positive from my source, put it into any of the holes on this side, and then, of course, my negative from the source into any of these holes here. And then we have a series resistor circuit. Let's go ahead and build a three resistor parallel circuit. Now, I'm going to show two different ways of doing this. First way, I'm going to start off with my positive coming into my middle section. I'm going to take my first resistor and jump across the channel. And then I'm going to take my negative, again, making sure that I'm in the same column, and plug it into the bottom of the resistor. 
Now my second resistor, I'm going to put anywhere over here. And as well as my third resistor, I'm going to put over here. Now, it depends on how you want to do this. This way, I'm going to show you, I'm just going to go ahead and take a jumper from this resistor into this column with a jumper and same thing here I'm going to connect this one along the same column as this resistor and on the bottom same thing put it here put it here here and there now there's just one way of doing the parallel circuit again it's very important to make sure that when you put these components in there with the component and jumpers that they are in the same column I know it's a little bit hard to see with this particular camera but I'm gonna go ahead and remove these wires I could have just as easily have done this putting the resistors in there I could have connected directly to the power bar as well using shorter jumpers because the power bars are connected horizontally this effectively makes a parallel circuit. Now I have had students go ahead and take the resistor and just go ahead and stretch it across and put it in this way. However, as you can see as I stretch it, there's an awful lot of exposed wire along here that could cause shorts later on if it's a more complicated circuit. Again, as long as it appears to be in parallel like it is here. Let's go ahead now and build a basic series parallel circuit. I'm going to start off by adding my positive jumper. So I'm going to plug it into my positive power bar into the white section. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my first resistor in making sure that one terminal is in place with the jumper wire. I'm going to put my second resistor in across the channel like we did with the parallel. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my ground into this resistor right here. And what we have here right now is a series circuit. Let me add the parallel component with two more resistors. I'm going to put this one in, number three, and number four. Now like we did with the parallel, I'm going to use a jumper and go from these resistors to the top of this one. I'll put a second one in to the top of the fourth resistor into the top of the third one and do the same thing on the bottom. I'm going to put a jumper here and here connecting the second and third one in parallel and now this last jumper will connect the fourth one to the third one. What we have here now is a basic series parallel circuit. Here's my series component and here's my parallel component. Now all I would have to do is go ahead and connect up my power to the circuit. Let's go ahead and put an integrated circuit onto our breadboard. I have here a basic gate IC and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the board over the channel. So I'm going to put it in the holes carefully and then lightly press down to lock it into place. 
Now I know that this is a gate IC, so pin 14 is VCC and pin 7 is ground. So I'm going to take my jumper from positive power bar and put it into the same column as pin 14. And I'm going to go ahead and put ground in the same column as the ground on the chip. And there we go. Now all I have to do is connect up my positive to my positive source and my negative to ground. Now one thing about ICs in these breadboards, the pins on the IC are lightly bent outward so that they lock into place. So what happens is, is that they're pretty snug on the board. And to get these off, you got to kind of slowly pry them off the board. It is suggested you get yourself a nice pair of chip removers, like I have here. And it allows me to go on either side. So I can show it to you. On either side of the IC. And then I lightly wiggle to pull the IC off. Additionally, you might want to get a chip inserter. Now this one here is real nice because I can take my chip and put the inserter over top, position it, push down, and then the chip is in place. Let's finish this video with talking about the length of your jumper wires. With this circuit here that I just threw up here, I have wires that are way too long. And the problem with building a circuit like this is that, yes, it could work. But when you go to start taking measurements in the circuit, now if this was a digital circuit, it wouldn't be so bad because the probe could make it in there. But when you're trying to put, like, your jumper wires to your meter in there, you're moving wires and it can easily knock them out. So what you want to do is make sure that your jumper wires are as small as possible. So I can easily replace these large ground wires with the smaller jumper. Now even this one here that I'm putting in here now is a bit too big. This does what it needs it to do, connect all the uh, points on the circuit. But now, our connections aren't in the way. Okay, they aren't in the way. And I can easily get in there, and let me turn the board, and you can see that the connections are small. Now, I won't, I have less of a chance of knocking one of these jumpers out or moving a component wrong and it's shorting out and the circuit not working. Now what I recommend is that you can either buy a box of pre-made jumpers or get some wire and painstakingly go ahead and cut yourself some jumpers. I usually cut my jumpers in inch increments. So I got like a one inch, two inch, three inch, and four inch. Now, take a little bit of time now to sit down and cut these wires and strip them. But in the end, it'll make your circuit look a lot nicer. I like to say with the way the circuit was originally, that it was an octopus. And it's hard to fix an octopus and troubleshoot. So something to think about as you're planning to build your circuits.